Welcome to ICONS. In ICONS, we try to acquaint you with the different people, the events, and the places in the Bible. We have finished the first five books with Together Constitute the Pentateuch. We are in the books of history. We are now presently in the kingship of the house of David. We have finished the stories of David and Solomon and Jeroboam and Zeroboam. And now we have reached the reign of King Ahab with his wife Jezebel. And we also see the introduction of the prophet Elijah, one of the most powerful prophets in the history of Israel. We have a wonderful panel to help us in this discussion. We have with us Saujinia Mary. Saujinia is from Bangalore. She has finished her computer science course there and she's doing a course here at the Divine Institute of Bible and Spirituality. Saujinia, welcome to the program. Thank you. We have with us Preeti Trisina. Preeti is also from Bangalore. She has finished her MSc in Software Systems and she's here doing a course in the Divine Institute of Bible and Spirituality. Preeti, welcome to the program. Thank you, brother. We have with us Reverend Dr. Joseph Tundi Parmil. Father Joseph has done his PhD in scripture from Rome. He is the mentor of our program. He's a very valued resource person here at the Divine Institute of Bible and Spirituality. He's a prolific writer and he's also a valued resource person at the Pontifical Seminary in Alway. Father, welcome to the program. Thank you. We have with us Father Ratnaraj, who's from the Oh My Congregation from Sri Lanka. Father is also here doing a course at the Divine Institute of Bible and Spirituality. Father, welcome to the program. Thank you. We are continuing the story of Elijah and the new disciple, Elisha. Elijah, one of the most powerful prophets about whom it is said in the word of God in the book of Sirach in 48.1. Then Elijah arose, a prophet like fire. His word burnt like a torch. Such a powerful prophet. Now he has a disciple, Elisha who he's training in the ways to serve the Lord. We'll ask Father to help situate exactly where we are. Could you help us, Father? So, as you said, Prophet Elijah is there mm -hmm. to show that Yahweh is the God of Israel. Yes. The context was the Queen Jezebel and the King Ahab, they had introduced the cult of Baal yes. as the official cult of the, empire, of the kingdom. Of the kingdom. So, there was Yahwism in great danger of being extinct. Mm -hmm. And therefore, in that challenge and confrontation on Mount Carmel, Elijah had proved that Yahweh is the God of Israel. Yes. Now, in between, there is also another incident here, that is the battle or the war with Ben-Hadad. Yes. And Ben-Hadad lost that battle precisely because Ben-Hadad, the king of Syria, he considered Yahweh only as the God of the mountain. Yes. And now, the sacred writer wants to show that the Yahweh is the God not only of the mountain but of the whole universe. Yes. What Elijah is trying to show that Yahweh is the God of the universe, yes. God of the nature, mm -hmm. God of the elements. Through another incident with the fact of a confrontation between ben Hadad and Ahab mm -hmm. and ben Hadad losing there, now the sacred writer is trying to show that even in that losing battle of ben Hadad. Yahweh is showing that he is not simply a local deity, yes. but the God of the universe. Yes. Thank you much, Father. Right. Father, what was the mistake that King Ahab committed with regard to Ben Hadad? Yeah. Ben Hadad, the king, he had confronted King Ahab of Israel twice in battle. Both battles he lost. And there was a terrible loss of personnel as far as the Syrian army is concerned. Mm -hmm. And then, the king of Israel, that is Ben Hadad, sought refuge with the king of Israel. And he said, This is this argument, my brother. So, inviting him mm -hmm. to get into his chariot, mm -hmm. he took him to, his, to Samaria. Mm -hmm. On the way, Ben Hadad said, mm -hmm. As my father has certain places of maybe market like place in your kingdom. You can come to my place and have start your business there. Allowing trade. So allowing mutual trade, so to say. And the king agreed to that. Mm -hmm. But then, God had expected Ahab to exterminate yes. the Syrians. Okay. Precisely because Ben Hadad and the Syrians mm -hmm. did not have the correct understanding of God. Okay. And therefore, the mistake was, he whom God had intended to be killed, mm -hmm. not only that Ahab did not kill him, but accepted him as a friend 
and continued him to come to Israel and to engage in mutual trade. Mm -hmm. So that was the mistake. In short, King Ahab went against what God had intended and also communicated it through the prophets. Yes. Uh, two prophets were sent to him mm -hmm. and saying that Ben Haddad is the enemy and uh, had given the sign. But uh, the mistake which uh, this king of Israel, that is Ahab, committed was he could not recognize the sign that God gave, neither intentions of God. Okay. Despite the warnings, he himself voluntarily went yeah. and invited him. Yeah, invited him. And also the expression that is made is, brother, yes. get in. Brother, get in. He makes a relationship. Yeah, I remember then, this man was uh, in the habit of drinking, oh. and then he made so, so great a boasting, mm -hmm. and then he to some extent belittled the God of Israel, so the king must be knowing all this. But in spite of that, mm. so he doesn't take it seriously. Most probably, Ahab is considering this king of ben Hadad as one of the kings. And also what the sacrilegious statement which mm. ben Hadad said about uh, Yahweh, mm -hmm. for as far as the king of Israel is concerned, oh, it is only a simple remark. Yes. I think, Father, this was also like in the book of Deuteronomy, yeah. the Lord God has told the Israelites that when you go to Canaan mm. and you capture a kingdom, you mm. must completely vanquish them. Yeah. But they never did that all the time. No. They always... That kind of, it is called harem, that yes. practice of harem. Mm -hmm. But it was not, as far as we can understand from the text, it was not always the case. Mm -hmm. There was to some extent a kind of harmonious living together. Because, but it, then he said that if you do that, yeah. then their gods will slowly become your gods. That, yeah. that was precisely the reason why God asked the Israelis to exterminate the conquered people, mm -hmm. was precisely there was the danger of idolatry. Correct. So, so I think now what Ben Haddad, Ahab should have completely finished him. Yeah, the yeah, correct. Battle. He should be knowing as to what God has said. Correct. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses had said, yes. the king should write down a copy of this law, keep it with him, and read it every day. Yes. Therefore, there is no excuse whatsoever mm -hmm. for the king to say that I don't know this. Yes. Because this is precisely what Moses had told them, as if it is the commandment of Yahweh, that the king has a special responsibility mm -hmm. to keep a copy of Torah with him and to read it. Reading it every day will increase our determination that yeah, we should correct. never do yeah, it. Correct. So the, ultimately it meant that he should be open to the will of God, which is manifested through the Torah. Thank you, Father. Father, what was the verdict against Ahab? God had expected Ben Hadad to be killed. Yes. But the king of Israel, Ahab, did not carry it out. Therefore, what God intended with Ben Hadad God said, that will be awarded to you. That means you are going to be killed in a battle. So yeah. Father, this sounds like as if the, you know, when Naaman, the Syrian's leprosy mm. was transferred onto the disciple of Elisha when he went to receive the gifts that Elisha had yeah. not received. Yeah. So it was so, some sort of bribe taking, mm -hmm. yes. which was not pleasing to Yahweh. Mm -hmm. In fact, the prophet Elisha could have got something from him. Yes. But Elisha refused, mm -hmm. but the, his servant took it this kind of... Thing. Therefore, what Naaman was cured of, mm -hmm. that was given to the servant of Elisha. So, the same way here, we see that because Ahab did not kill Ben Hadad, uh -huh. what the Lord God had intended for Ben Hadad and his people. Yeah, that turned back upon the ah Ahab. Right. Thank you, Father. Father, why did Naboth refuse to hand over his vineyard to Ahab? There is a fundamental theological reason for that. It is said Naboth had a vineyard close to the royal palace. And the king wanted that plot for a vegetable garden. And the king offered a, another, so it's a vineyard if he wants, or even another plot. Mm -hmm. But Naboth said, I will not give. The reason is, the ancestral property, which was actually given in the 13th century by Joshua, mm -hmm. when Canaan was conquered, it was divided among the tribes. And getting inheritance, in the promise that is what was made to Abraham is through the land. The belief among the Israelites was the blessing that was offered to Abraham. I will make you a people. I will give you a land mm -hmm. and you are going to be a source of blessing. So these are the three blessings. Mm -hmm. For an Israelite to be a partaker in that blessing, the land that was given to them in the 13th century 
by Joshua should be maintained. Okay. Therefore, no Israelite would part Bhakti from her ancestral property because that is the sign of his sharing in the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. And that is why the people of Israel are so much attached to the land because this is part of the blessings which God had promised in chapter 12 of the book of uh, Genesis. And that was the reason why Naboth refused to part with his land, though the king himself asked for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Good. So, Father, that means if somebody sold the ancestral property, mm -hmm. was it akin to forfeiting your right to the promised land? Yeah. So, that was the reason why in the Jubilee year, mm -hmm. yes. that the land should go back. Maximum, only for a period of 49 years, yes. the land will be alienated. That is, if you put it up as a... As a as for a loan or if you take it as a... Yeah, correct. Okay. But in the 50th year, mm -hmm. that is the year of Jubilee, mm -hmm. the land to... should return to the original owner. Okay. That was the thing. Thank you, Father. Father, what was the conspiracy of Jezebel? When King Ahab heard that Naboth is not willing uh -huh. to part from the property, the king was very sad. Yes. And he returned to the palace and it is said he was not eating anything. Mm -hmm. He was just lying down. It is then that Jezebel said, Are you the king of Israel? Now, she thinks mostly in terms of Sidonian kings. Yes. Whatever the king wants, he, gets. That it will be, he, he will get it done. And then Jezebel fabricated a document and got some wicked people to bear witness against Naboth, saying that I, we have heard Naboth blaspheming, mm -hmm. blasphemy against Yahweh and also blasphemy against the king. According to the law of Deuteronomy, any blasphemy, that is a sacrilege and that such people should be stoned, stoned to, death. to death. And therefore, there was every legal reason mm -hmm. for Naboth to be stoned to death. And uh, she got false witnesses and uh, fabricated a letter like that. Father, how did Elijah confront Ahab? Once Naboth was dead, mm -hmm. the king Ahab came to the vineyard of Naboth to take possession of it. Okay. According to the Israelite law, to take possession of a land, mm -hmm. the person concerned has to be in that place. Therefore, when the king had gone to the vineyard of Naboth, mm -hmm. God said to Elijah, Elijah, now the king is there, go and meet him. Mm -hmm. And then, very strong words Elijah said, yes. you have sold yourself to do this wicked thing. You have sold yourself. Mm -hmm. And therefore he said, in the place where the dogs licked the blood of Naboth, dogs will lick your blood. Remember, it is to a king yes. that the man is saying this. That where the place, because when a person is stoned, he is not given a burial. It in that heap of stones, he is lying there. And with all the blood oozing forth, the dogs will come and lick the, the blood. So that is that must have happened also in the case of Naboth. And that is where the prophet is saying, in the place, where the dogs licked the blood of uh, Naboth, the dogs will lick your blood. So that is very strange. Yes, he even says, Father, mm. such strong words. Yeah. In 1 Kings 21, it says, I will bring disaster on you. I will consume you and will cut off from Ahab every male, mm. bond or free in Israel. And I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam. Correct. That means complete decimation. Yeah. Because before Yahweh, it was such a heinous crime. And that is why I will bring disaster upon your family. And the prophet had the courage to go. And at the moment here, the, uh, the king is victorious. Yes. Precisely at the moment of victory. And when he thinks that he has his day, mm -hmm. it is at that time the prophet is going and tells, I am going to bring disaster upon your family. God never tolerates innocent bloodshed. The, the Old Testament book was, God is the owner of life. Mm. There is life in the blood and therefore taking innocent blood is equivalent to a person playing God. And that is why I said, even if an animal is shedding blood, that animal should be stoned to death. So it was so, the, the punishment was so terrible. The same thing what happened with uh, Uriah. Yes. In and the case of Ma that. Uh, the David. David. And Nathan came and said, you are that man. Yes. I think the difference was that at that time, David received the grace to go into repentance. Yeah. 
when he tore off his clothes and went into mourning. Hmm. But here, I think Ahab has no thoughts of repentance. Yeah, but all. he he is sorry about it. He also shows some sign of repentance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this kind of destruction will not take place in your time, but mm -hmm. after you are. Any injustice to his people got questions right there. Yeah. Not only to his people, but to anybody. To anybody. Because <laughs> Uriah was not an Israelite. Uh, yes. In the case of David, Uriah was not an Israelite. Zintai. And in spite of that, God comes and asks for account for that. So God is concerned about everybody, Israelite or non-Israelite. Father, what was the response of Ahab? Like David, apparently Ahab also repented. And it is said he was wearing sackcloth and going about fasting and all that. So these were the signs of repentance. And because of that, God told Elijah, have you not seen how Ahab has humiliated himself? Mm -hmm. Therefore. I am not going to bring this punishment at this time. So it shows God, who is a God of justice, is also a God of mercy. mercy. Though he had said so powerful things, repentance, that melts the heart of God. Mm. That is why God will not despise a repentant mm. sinner. So that is a, of course, in the New Testament it is very clearly taught. Already in the Old Testament we have that indication about the same. Repentance that opens the heart of God. I think Father also proves that from a human perspective, Ahab who has done so much yeah. against the Lord, yeah. which means without any conscience, he has done complete evil, yeah. completely disobeying the Lord throughout the past, yeah. marrying Jezebel and throughout, and still at this moment, one moment of repentance, yeah. and the Lord says that, okay, I forgive him, I am going to allow it only in the life of his son, yeah. not in his lifetime. Yeah. And uh, for example, the same thing we can also see in the case of the thief on the right side of the Lord. Yes. Because he himself admitted that we deserve this. Yes. That means he was culprit of yes. homicide and all that. Mm -hmm. But a better repentance, even that explicit repentance is not mentioned mm -hmm. on the cross. Yes. Only said, Lord, please remember me. That touches the heart of God. So he is forgiven and he said, today, you are going to be with me in paradise. in paradise. So the power of forgiveness, the powerful forgiveness, and the power of repentance yes. as far as we are concerned. Father, with regard to repentance, why do they wear sackcloth? We, we see almost in various occasions, when they go for repentance, they wear sackcloth. What is the meaning behind? Putting on ashes and wearing sackcloth was a symbolic way of expressing repentance. Whereas silk and such smooth clothes, we can say, is a sign of luxury. It is just the contrary. Okay. That is why wearing sackcloth was a sign of repentance. Thank you, Father. Father, what do you understand about God from Naboth's incident? The God of Israel, God in the Old Testament, is a God of justice. Naboth, he had nobody to support him. Externally, legally, what was done unto him is correct because he is accused of having blasphemed Yahweh and the king. But then God sees the heart. So external carrying out of justice is not what counts before God. It can happen even today. The legal system, perfectly clear, it may be the judge will be issuing the verdict on the base of evidence. But evidence you can create. So that is not, there is somebody from whom you cannot hide the real truth. Therefore, the nature about God from the incident about Naboth is God sees everything. And God judges not according to the judgment of the world. So God's norms are different from the norms of the world. So this is what we learn about the God of the Old Testament from the Naboth incident. Thank you, Father. Father, how does one understand the prophets of Israel from yeah. the incident of Naboth? It shows how courageously the prophet of Israel, mm -hmm. they are taking the place of God. Yes. And that is why it is said, the prophets are God's messengers. Mm -hmm. What God wanted to communicate is actually communicated through the prophets. Sometimes it is also called the prophets are the mouthpiece of Yahweh. Yes. The verdict, the judgment against Ahab is what Yahweh is telling. Correct. And that is why in the prophetical books, there is the famous or usual expression, thus says Yahweh. Yes. 
in Hebrew it is Koh Amar Adonai. Yeah. So that is a whatever the prophet says is God's own word, yes. and that is why the prophetical utterances are introduced by the usual phrase, "Thus says yes. Yahweh." So it is no more the prophet's words, but the Yahweh is actually speaking, through, speaking the through the prophet. Thank you, thank you, Father. Father, are there any prophetess who were so daring like this to take God's word? First of all, only very few prophetess are spoken of. Miriam, the sister of Moses, is called prophetess yes. once. Then Deborah, yes. she was not a prophet, prophetess, she is speaking, but one of the judges mm -hmm. of Israel. But in the early period of the history of Israel, Deborah was one of the judges, together with other men. Mm -hmm. And it's also said about that we have seen while dealing with the book of uh, Judges, that Deborah was judging or carrying out justice in Israel. So carrying out justice in Israel will imply also issuing bold judgment. So we can only indirectly conclude that Deborah, as a judge, though she is not called a prophet as such, mm -hmm. then was carrying out this kind of bold statement. Women also can take a prophetic role. Not only can, but also should. should. Father, I also want to ask you, there's, it's mentioned in 1 Kings chapter 20, verses 35 and 36, mm -hmm. that at the command of the Lord, a certain member of a company of prophets said to another, strike me. Mm -hmm. But the man refused to strike him. Then he said to him, because you have not obeyed the voice of the Lord, mm -hmm. As soon as you have left me, a lion will kill you. Mm. And when he had left him, a lion met him and killed him. Mm. It's a very funny incident. Mm -hmm. But there is a small clue there. Mm -hmm. It is said that man, that prophet asked the man to strike him at the command of the Lord. Okay. Therefore, by refusing to strike him, mm -hmm. he is actually refusing to, to carry out what God had intended. And therefore, what God had intended, if that is not carried out, there will be necessarily a punishment. So in order to show that God's will should be carried out, mm -hmm. even though apparently a stupid action, that that should be, because the striking a person for no yes. reason. I mean, if anyone comes to you and says, in the name of the Lord, I tell you, strike me. Remember, he is asking, in the name of the Lord, I am asking you, not simply strike me. Mm -hmm. He is asking, strike me, because this is what God has said. That man should realize that he is one of the prophets yes. who are actually more or less in the divine realm. Mm -hmm because in touch with the world of the divine. Yes. So he should conclude that this is actually coming from the Lord and then act accordingly. Okay. He was killed by a lion because he did not act according to what God had asked. Okay. Thank you much, Father. Viewers, thank you very much for being with us on this episode. We see in this, the incident of Naboth and how, as Preeti said, that the Lord will never allow the shedding of innocent blood and how Father led it so beautifully through the whole interaction of Ahab and Elijah and how Elijah stands so firm in the Lord that he could stand in front of the king of Israel and tell him that you have done wrong. Till we meet next time, stay blessed.